garment machinery and equipment. In this course, you will learn about the use of pre-production machinery in a garment manufacturing unit, the sewing mechanisms and different types of sewing machines, the use of automation and de-skilling devices involved in garment manufacturing. In the first unit, pre-production machinery, you will understand the use of pre-production machinery in a garment manufacturing unit. This unit comprises of four modules and a final review section. By the end of this unit, students will be able to describe the working of automated spreading machinery used in garment manufacturing with theoretical knowledge of the functions of each parts. Describe the working of commonly used cutting machines in garment manufacturing along with the functions of each part. Practice cutting of woven fabrics using commonly used cutting machines in apparel manufacturing. Study specialized cutting machines used in garment and non-garment sectors. Review the theory behind fusing process. Identify parts of a fusing machine. Identify different types of fusing machines and relate to their use with respect to garment parts and types. The first module provides an overview of the spreading surfaces and spreading machines. Let us begin by looking at the process flow of garment manufacturing. There are three stages of garment manufacturing, pre-production, production and post-production. The pre-production stage comprises of spreading, cutting and fusing. In the production stage, the main activity is sewing. In the post-production stages, important activities include finishing and packing. The spreading process. The spreading process forms a lay by placing one or more number of fabric plies on top of one another for a required length. The length of the lay and the number of plies to be laid for a particular lay will be predetermined as per the cutting plan. The cutting plan specifies the specifications of each lay type and the number of times the same specification lay has to be cut with different colored fabric plies to achieve the number of garments required in each color and size. Spreading equipment consists of spreading surfaces that is the tables, spreading machines, pins, weight bars and fabric control devices as well as fabric cutting devices. Spreading surfaces will depend on the type of fabric, spreading equipment, cutting method and also the firm's quality standards. Spreading requires a flat smooth surface. For this purpose normally a table is used. If the table is being used for cutting as well, in most of the cases it is being used, then it should be leveled. By leveling we mean that the table surface has to be horizontal to the floor. The table must be constructed sturdily to bear the weight of a spread. The width and length of the table will vary with the width of the fabric and production demands. Most often the space available determines the dimensions of the table. Spreading surfaces need to be 10 inches wider than the fabric width to allow the cutting knife to rest on the table. Spreading tables may have tracks or rails placed along one or both sides or just a few inches off the floor for the spreader to move up and down the length of the table. Spreading tables are usually covered with laminated or cardboard to provide a low level of friction. Special spreading tables 
may also have vacuum points which are used to compress the lay. Lay can be compressed up to 75 percent. This prevents movement of slippery fabrics and prevents shifting of fabric during cutting. Air flotation tables allow easy movement of lay when they are activated. Spreading tables may also be connected to a conveyor that carries the fabric to the cutting table. Majority of the commercially available spreading tables come as modules. By module, we mean that they are of standard width and length. This allows a factory to configure the length as required. Pin tables. A special type of table is used for spreading checked and striped fabrics which is called as pin table. Pin tables consist of pins beneath the spreading table. The spreading operator can raise the pins at the points where they are required. While laying the fabric, the spreading operator pins the fabric down on particular stripe or check pattern. This allows the fabric to be spread without giving any extra allowance for block cutting. The lay can be ready cut as per the patterns if the marker is done as per check matching. Now, let us move on to the spreading machines. Spreading machines are of various types, stationary, portable or fixed and traveling machines which are of manual, semi-automatic and automatic types. Stationary spreading remains in one position that is at the end of the table while traveling machines move along the length of the table. Manual spreading machine speeds are the same as the operator's speed. They basically consist of a frame or a carriage, wheels traveling along the tracks, fabric support and guide rolls to aid correct unrolling of the fabric. Manually operated spreaders can be as simple as a roll bar mounted on four wheels that is pushed along the table by an operator. In manual spreaders, the spreading speed can be controlled by the operator who moves the machine. The cloth is pulled carefully from the fabric roll by hand and is cut to the appropriate length. Mechanical devices can be provided to facilitate the unrolling and cutting operations, but the proper alignment of the fabric edges is the responsibility of the human operator. Generally, the spreader will align the edges at one side only so that any width variation happens will happen at the other side of the lay. Now, this it is suitable for short lays and for frequent changes in fabrics and colors. It is often used in small businesses. The spreading carriage. The cloth is unwound and spread semi-automatically using a manually driven carriage. 
the carriage is moved back and forth over the laying table. A built in mechanism takes care of aligning the fabric edges and smoothing the plies. This system is favored when long and broad and or if the fabric is presented in large batches for relatively large orders. This method is very efficient and suitable for small businesses. Automatic spreaders. These machines are ideal for increasing productivity and quality. These machines may include various features such as a motor to drive the carriage, a platform on which the operator rides, a ply cutting device, automatic catchers, ply counters and alignment shifters, a turntable and a direct drive on the fabric support and tension devices. Tension mechanisms ensure that the rate of spreading is synchronized with the rate of fabric that is unrolled. The alignment shifters are actuated by photoelectric mechanisms sensing any deviation from the required alignment. In this case, they shift the roll to the correct position. With indicators, alert the operator on any width variations in the fabric. End catches hold the fabric at the end of the lay. An overfeed device which feeds extra fabric when a fold is made. Ply cutting devices cut the fabric across the width at the end of the lay. It is usually consists of a rotary knife blade mounted on rails.
turntables. Turntables permit phase one way spreading on every trip. The turntable rotates 180 degrees at the end of the spread during dead heading that is when the spreading machines return back from the spreading to their original position the machine may travel at higher speed. A very highly automated spreader may be preset to a selected number of plays. A sound indicator alerts the user when it has reached the selected number or has come to the end of a piece of fabric. Some machines are equipped with automatic sensing of previously marked flaws and damages. As the machine comes across a flaw, the sensor will halt the spreader, the ply cutter will cut across the ply and the spreader will reverse the direction to the nearest splice mark on the marker plan and then continue its run.
Now, let us move to learn about common cutting machines. Cutting. Cutting is the process of separating a spread into garment parts that are precise in size and shape. These parts will be printed as pattern pieces on a marker which is kept on the lay. It may involve transferring marks and notches from the marker to the garment parts to assist operators during sewing. The spread can also be cut into sections or blocks which are then given precision cut. Generally, in this case, the block cut lay will be transferred to a band knife and given a precision cut. Cutting may also involve preparing sections of piece goods for special operations such as screen printing, especially in the case of t-shirts with chest prints. Cutting equipment. Cutting can either be manual or automated. Cutting depends on the skill of the operator. These equipments can be portable or stationary. Portable knives are moved through the spread while stationary cutters require the operator to position and control fabric blocks in through the blade. There are two types of portable cutting knives, mainly the vertical reciprocating straight knife and round knife. The straight knife. The straight knife consists of a base plate with rollers for ease of the movement, an upright carrying the straight blade. The power system consisting of the motor and the switch, the cutting blade which can have various edges, an operating handle, sharpening device and the blade guard. These machines are also available with a blade cooling system. The vertical knives have an up and down cutting action. Blades vary in length from 6 to 14 inches. Blade length and the adjustable height of the blade guard are factors determining the spread height that can be cut. This feature must be considered in choosing a straight knife cutting machine. The blade guard not only acts as a safety device for the operator, but also holds the top flies of the fabric, thus preventing them from lifting up during cutting. Metal mesh gloves are also available as a safety device for the cutting operators. The cutting blade is available in various edges such as straight, serrated and wavy edge. The most commonly used is the straight knife. Wavy edges help to reduce heat generation and are used for cutting plastics and vinyls whereas saw edge type are used to cut canvas. The straight knife is also available in varying speeds allowing the same machine to be used for natural or thermoplastic fabrics. This is a straight knife cutting machine. This machine is used to cut in bulk fabric lace in an apparel manufacturing unit. Essentially, this machine consists of a straight knife a knife guard, a base plate, a sharpening mechanism, a motor and a handle for the operator to operate it. The entire machine is switched off and on and off with the flick of this switch. Now we will see each part in detail. This is the base plate. The function of the base plate is that it supports the entire machine and also provides movement. The entire machine can be moved by four rollers which are provided in the base plate. The base plate has two parts, one is the squarish part, the other one is the half moon part. This half moon part is sloped in nature because when there is a fabric lay to be cut, when you push the machine into the lay, 
the bottom plies will come above the slope and gets lifted up for cutting. This is the straight knife which has a up and down vertical motion. The distance between the topmost point of the knife and the bottommost point of the knife is called as stroke of the knife. This is the knife guard. To lift the knife guard, we have to press this handle, lift it upwards and leave the handle so that the knife guard gets set in a position or if you want to lower it down again press the lever make it down and leave it. The function of the knife guard is that it has to go and sit on top of the lay to provide a firmer grip to the machine on fabric. This is the handle the cutting operator holds the machine by one hand and pushes it through the lay giving force so that the knife cuts through the lay. This is the motor which drives the entire machine. It can be either of induction or servo type. The electrical supply is given through this socket. This is the on off switch. This lever when pressed down will activate the sharpening mechanism which will go down and come back for a whole cycle thus sharpening the blade. Now we will see it. While cutting, the operator moves the straight knife machine to position, lowers the knife guard to top of the lay, starts the machine and starts to cut.
advantages of the straight knife. This machine is most commonly used in the industry today because of its adaptability and flexibility to various kinds of fabrics and spread heights. Due to the shape of the cutting knife, it is a good choice for accurately cutting sharp corners and angles. Limitations. However, it has its limitations too. It does not give very accurate cutting along the curves due to the blade shape. The broader the width of the blade, the less accurate the cut along the curves will be. As the machine enters the spread, the base plate lifts up the plies of the fabric causing a slight distortion. To overcome this, edges of the base plate are sloped and the front is curved. The base plate is the foundation that supports and helps balance the cutting machine and maintains the position of the blade at 90 degrees. During cutting, it is very important that the machine is not tilted as the cutting would not be proper. The straight knife machine can make only lateral cuts into the spread and cannot be used to cut areas from the center of the garment parts. A slasher can be used for this. It cuts into the spread from the above that is vertically without making a cut across the fabric. The operator power is affected by the weight of the machine, handle height, sharpness of the blade and the stroke. Stroke is the vertical distance travelled by the blade during its reciprocation. The supporting arm. A further advancement to the straight knife machine is the use of a supporting arm that supports the machine from the above. Therefore, the heavy base plate can be replaced by a small flat base plate which reduces distortion of plies, narrower blade therefore enabling cutting along sharper curves. Further, there are lesser chances of tilting of the blade during cutting. The rotary or round knife. The rotary or round knife is a portable cutting machine. It consists of a round blade, a motor above it and a handle to direct the machine. The knife rotates in the anti-clockwise direction. It cuts the fabric with one way thrust as compared to the up and down motion of the straight knife. The cutting capacity or spread height depends on the blade diameter, motor power and the speed. This is a round knife cutting machine. As the name suggests, it has a knife which is round in nature, a base plate just like in straight knife cutting machine with four rollers, a handle to push through the machine through the fabric plies, an on and off switch, a motor and a sharpening mechanism. The height of the cutting can be controlled by adjusting the height of the knife guard. This is the knife guard. By loosening up this screw and either taking it upward or downward, we can adjust the knife guard height. After that, we have to tighten the knife guard. The sharpening of the knife is activated by pressing the lever. Okay. The operator always wears an iron mesh glove on his non-operating hand which is holding the fabric lay from the top as a safety measure.
smaller cuts, but like all Maiman cutters, they are built for long life under rigorous industrial conditions. The smallest machine in this series is the Rotoshear 2, which has a two and a half inch blade and a one half inch cutting capacity. This compact, lightweight, high-speed machine is used for cutting small lays where straight lines and slender curves are required. Maiman's Rotoshear 4 has a 4-inch blade and runs at extremely high speeds for efficient cutting of non-fusible materials. Our Rotoshear 10 combines a 4-sided blade with low speed and high torque for cutting up to 1-inch lays of synthetic or industrial materials without pulling or fusing. These machines have series-wound motors and are generally used when cutting straight lines and slender curves. Maiman's large round knife series is a family of high-quality models available in a variety of motor and blade sizes and features a patented thread seal on the gear to keep out dust and lint. The four models available are called the Model 44, Model 54, Model 59, and Model 87. Model 54 combines our larger, more powerful motor with a 4-inch blade and 2-inch cutting capacity for easy maneuverability while cutting heavy, dense material. Model 44 has the same blade size and capacity with a smaller motor for cutting lighter lays of most materials. Model 59 is the industry standard, a 5 and a quarter inch round knife with 3 and 1 8 inch cutting capacity. And Model 87, with its 7-inch round blade and 4.4-inch capacity, is for the largest, most rugged jobs. All four of these models are built to operate continuously, 8 to 10 hours per day. Full production machines to be utilized for straight cuts, slender curves, and large radiuses. Modified versions of the models 59 and 87 are available for cutting carpeting, industrial fabrics, and any other dense or heavy material. All of these models are also available with a driven track or can be operated on the floor to cut carpet or tent material. Cutting pitch. Cutting pitch is the angle at which the cutting device contacts the spread. It determines the uniformity in size of the pieces from the top to the bottom in a spread. Uniformity can be obtained only if the cutting pitch is maintained at 90 degree and the knife accurately guided through the lay. In case of the straight knife machine, the edge of the knife is perpendicular to the base plate. The cutting pitch is 90 degree. In case of the rotary blade, cutting pitch is less than 90 degree. The greater the diameter of the knife, the lesser is the cutting pitch and therefore the top ply will be cut sooner than the bottom ply. If the machine is moved forward, at the same time it will result in uneven cutting. In order to get a uniform cutting through the entire spread that is vertically, the machine must be kept stationary and the cutter must raise the bottom place. However, this does not ensure a uniform cut. This is the biggest limitation of the rotary knife. When the rotary knife cuts a spread whose height is greater than the blade diameter, then the middle place will get cut first, top place next followed with the bottom plies. This is also a limitation with the rotary knife. Stationary cutters. Stationary cutters have blades or cutting devices that are fixed to the machine and the operator manipulates the spread to cut it. There are two types, band knife and die cutters. Band knife. Band knife machines have blades that rotate through a slot on the cutting table while cutting. The operator guides the fabric through either a push or a pull action towards the knife. One edge of the blade is sharpened and the blade is narrower than the straight knife which is the greatest advantage of this machine. It gives accurate cuts for small parts such as collars, cuffs and pockets 
as the turning of the block on a narrower blade disrupts the place less than the wider blade of a straight knife machine. When using this machine, space has to be left around the garment parts during planning the marker. For small parts, a template can be used as a guide. Another advantage over the straight knife is that the blade of the straight knife tends to wear out faster at its lower end which is more in contact with the fabric unless the spread is high enough. On the other hand, in the band knife, the blade wears evenly due to its action cycle. The cutting knife is called as an endless knife or a loop knife. The machine resembles a sawmill cutter. Band knife machines are also available with 
air flotation tables to facilitate easy movement of the block. End cutters. End cutters are special type of round knife machines. A small diameter round knife is placed on a rail or track with a pushing arm. This ensues an accurate straight cut. End cutters are used to cut the end of the fabric after each spread while spreading. This is a end cutter generally used in spreading process. The end cutter has a rail upon which the entire machine is housed. This is the round knife. This is the handle. This is the on off switch and here is the ply counter. At the end of the spreading process, the extra fabric is cut away by the end cutter by pushing the knife through the rail using the handle. Die cutters. Die cutters are used for cutting when each and every piece is required to be cut in exactly the same shape. Dies are pre-shaped metallic outlines with a cutting edge. The cutting action is vertical. The accuracy and consistency of die cutting can be affected by the inaccurate placement of dies. Dies are in the shape of pattern fairy fairy. Dies are very useful in case of high production volumes of similar styles. Generally, small parts like collars and cuffs are cut by die cutters. The downward force is generated by hydraulic systems press the dies through the fabric clay. Slitting die machines have blades that are used to cut intricate slashes used in pockets, for example in well pockets. This is a die cutting machine. The operator switches on the machine. The pneumatically controlled cutting head rises up. The operator keeps the leather the die and clicks it and cuts the leather in the shape of the die. Now you can see that he has placed the die onto the top of the leather, clicks it and he has taken out the shape.
notches. Garment parts require notches in order to align them accurately during sewing and assembly. Operator controlled cutters can be used for this purpose. However, accuracy depends on the skill of the operator. It is also necessary that the lay must be absolutely vertical otherwise some pieces will be marked too deep while the other may be not marked at all. Special notching machines such as straight notches and V notches are available for this purpose. Hot notches have a heating element which fuses the fibers adjacent to the notch in order to prevent fraying and disappearance of the notch. It is a good choice with natural and knit fabrics. However, it cannot be used for thermoplastic fibers. It may also be available with adjustable heat control. This machine is called as a hot notcher. As the name indicates, it has a knife which is hot, it has a base plate, it has a on off switch and a temperature control. When you switch on the machine, you will find the light to switch, switch on. Wait for few seconds so that the machine gets hot enough so that it can cinch the fabric to make the notch mark. drills. When markings have to be made inside garment parts, for example, marking position of the pockets, appliques, dots, etc., drills are used. This machine consists of a motor that rotates the needle, a base plate and a long needle. The needle penetrates completely at the specified point creating a hole or just shifting yarns. Certain drill machines are also equipped with a hollow needle that carry marking fluid that leaves a mark on the fabric place. It is important that the marks remain till the particular sewing operation is over. Drills are problematic to use on loosely woven thick structured fabrics as the loosely woven structure will make the drill hole to disappear after a few hours. Marking can also be made using thread markers which carry the thread through the entire spread and then individual threads are cut. It may also be done manually on every ply using a template, but it is time consuming. This is a cloth drilling machine. The purpose of this machine is when you have a smaller part to be attached on to a larger part, the placement of the smaller part has to be marked. This can be either achieved as marking in single plies using pens, chalks or using machines like this. This machine essentially has a needle which is a hot needle which is heated through this temperature control and it is plunged into the fabric lay and it leaves a hole where it touches the fabric thus marking the spot. The depth of the hole is controlled by this knob and adjusting the distance between these two. This machine also has a base plate and has a leveler. The depth of the needle is changed by loosening this 
screw and either bringing it down or bringing it upwards and once you tighten the screw the depth is set while doing the hole you switch on the machine wait for few seconds for the machine to get heated then plunge the hole and take it up now the hole is made